I think we are ready to start. Yeah, when, yeah. all right. Okay. Well, uh, in that case, uh, welcome everybody to uh, to the first Tunga Dev Hour of uh, 2021. Um, for for all our um, participants uh, and all the attendees, um, it's going to be a bit different than we did last year. So last year we had a couple of sessions with some slides, but but not this time. We're going to have a, a very nice conversation with. Our two guests from the pod group, David and uh, Felix, uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you. For the attendees that don't know me yet, I am Rainier, I'm the CEO of Tunga. With me is Viola. Viola, short introduction. Yes, I am Viola and I'm the head of talent. All right. Uh, but it's not about us, it's about our guests. So uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, who can I give the, the word? Who, who's going to introduce um, themselves first? I'm happy to, to, to get the ball rolling. Um, Great. Um, my name's David Boxall. Uh, I'm the uh, Business Development Director for uh, Europe, Middle East and, and Africa. Uh, so I look after the commercial aspects of the company. Um, Pod Group, as a, as a company, we are uh, an uh, AE, uh, NO, which is an enterprise network operator, um, previously an MVNO, which is a mobile virtual uh, network operator. Uh, in simple terms, uh, we provide uh, data connectivity to IoT devices. The company's been going for 20 years, and uh, we started off as a proof of delivery box manufacturer. That's where the, the POD comes from. So uh, it's the pod group we've now. Uh, uh, concentrated our efforts on, on connectivity and uh, we provide uh, connectivity to uh, multiple devices in many countries and many applications uh, around the world. And I'll pass you over to our research and development director, uh, Felix. Thank you. Yes, I'm Felix Ontañón from the Spanish office. I'm the director of the research of innovation for the group. And from this department, what we basically do is creating specific IoT connectivity solutions for the global market. And my special interest is into promoting the SIM card itself, not only as a passive element in your connectivity, but also as an active element that can provide with connectivity solutions for IoT projects. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for introducing yourself. So uh, I think already a couple of terms here that uh, that we had some questions about, because uh, yeah, one of the things that uh, that is immediately apparent when uh, when I go to the Park Group's website is that you call yourselves the world's first ENO. Uh, so David, you explained it already a little bit, but. Uh, for people that are maybe a bit new to IoT and to networks, can you explain what is the major difference with, with, with an ENO? Uh, an ENO we basically means we provide uh, IoT connectivity and networks specifically designed for enterprises with the objective of the enterprises owning the, the, the network. Uh, so this means not to try and it's not to, uh, tying enterprises to one provider or another. So it gives us the, the uh, customers a little bit more of an agnostic uh, opportunity to be able to choose what they, they want to do. So uh, we work with many of the global network providers and we provide all the solutions on, on one platform. Yeah, yeah, I, and and uh, there's another term that, that that we had some questions about. So you say uh, agnostic, right? And that's that, that's very important, I think, in the IoT context. Can you guys maybe share a little bit why uh, having an agnostic network is is so important? We we provide um, um, uh, many uh, connectivity solutions around the world from from many different suppliers. So, for example, say if you if you went to one of the major networks. Uh, it's just pick one for, for argument, say Vodafone, and uh, that's all, all you would be able to get connectivity from. Now we're able to get connectivity from many, many different uh, connectivity providers, which allows us to provide um, up to 600 networks on one SIM, for example's sake. And we also are able to uh, tailor the the data usage to a particular provider in a particular part of the world. So for example, sake, if you 
got a, a security camera which uses gigabytes worth of data, we'd be able to look at the best provider. We'll give you the, 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 the better option, better coverage uh, at the better price. Uh, so it allows us to tailor the, the, um, the connectivity solution to exactly to the, to the customer's requirement rather than you know, one size fits all, which it doesn't. Uh, so this is how we, we like to work really. So that's in, in relation to giving the, the customer the option. We'll say, look, this is option A, B or C. It's, it's entirely up to you uh, which one you go for. Ah, okay, okay. Hey, and um, I think that is also a bit uh, a relation to, to why IoT would be interesting to, to the African market. Uh, because you have these, you know, international companies operating uh, in, in various parts of the continent. So what, what kind of use cases do you see for, for IoT uh, for your clients you know, on the African continent? Uh, we have many uh, uh, customers in, on, in the African continent who uh, at present are using tracking devices, tracking modules in transport, haulage and, and fleet management. Um, and the, the advantages of, of using uh, pod group services is that we're able to provide all the networks uh, available in Africa on one SIM card. So if you have a truck or a device that needs to travel from one side of Africa to another, it will uh, remain connected on all of those networks available um, wherever it travels. Uh, so this is the, the advantage of what uh, POD can, can do in, in the territory of Africa is we, we already have those roaming agreements and able to provide competitive prices for data across the, the, um, the, the continent. Yeah, and I think that's uh, something that also relates to some of the projects that we've done in the past, that, have been, that we build applications that need to work also in environments with very low connectivity. So how would it work then? Would it automatically switch to, to the provider that provides the best connectivity in that location? Yes, it's, it's uh, the, the, the device itself would, would choose the, the, the strongest signal. Um, this is the, the, the device chooses the, the network. It's the, the ability um, of the, the positive is, is it, it gives the, the device many, many networks to choose from. Yeah. Whereas some other competitive sims where they've perhaps only got one network maybe only one network in, in each country. We yeah. would have two to three, maybe four networks per country as you travel through uh, across the continent. So it, it, the device has many, many network profiles to choose from if, it, if, if one is, is uh, falling uh, you know, into a to weak signal area. So uh, that's the, the advantage of, of a pod sim. But it's, it's the device that, that makes the, 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 the decision and Felix will be able to fill you in a little bit more on the hardware uh, side of things. No, and actually yeah, the... Um, yes, Felix, you're saying something? No, well, go ahead, go ahead. No, so I, it's, still, it's still about Africa. Generally, um, we, well, compared to Europe or America, we are looking at smart homes. So there's, there's more adoption of um, IoT uptake. But with Africa, um, you probably have a light or two. That tech is still, it's still picking up, right? So for me, I'd be more curious as to what industries, what domains you are offering solutions to in. Well, uh, currently, we're, we're offering it to, to, to everybody uh, in, in the IoT space. It's uh, uh, available, our SIMs are available to anybody who has a, uh, a cellular uh, connectivity-based device. So whether it's tracking or IoT, uh, and this could be industrial IoT, it could be security, it could be uh, any form. So it, the, the SIMs are available for any of these devices. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and how do you relate then the African market to, is, is it different than, than, than uh, the American market or the European market or the Asian market in that sense? Are there, are there different opportunities? The, the, the market in Europe is, is quite mature for um, tracking a, an IoT um, and um, America as well is, is quite mature for uh, the, the tracking. Uh, but uh, IoT worldwide is still quite an embryonic industry. Um, there's, there's a lot of scope everywhere for, for the IoT. And this would be an example, say, could be preventative maintenance. So if you have a, a, a very expensive machine 
in a factory, which may cost um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, would also cost a, a, a very high percentage to maintain it. However, if you have uh, sensors and uh, all, all forms of uh, devices around the, 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 uh, the machine, they can send the data to, to uh, a modem a router, which would then be able to take that data off premises um, onto the manufacturers uh, to be able to say, okay, this machine uh, now needs to be maintained. So that's the advantage of, of IoT. You can, that's a, a, a one single case where you can have many, many factories all linked together. So all the machines could be linked within a factory. And then if you've got a number of factories, you can then monitor all of the machines in all of your factories in any of the territories across uh, Africa. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there are tremendous amounts of use cases uh, yes, in the future. Yeah. yeah, that's just one. I, I could go on for, for many hours, but I think we've already got one hour. So uh, yeah, 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 true, yeah. true, true. Yeah, but maybe that's uh, that's interesting also in relation to to our our audience here. Um, yeah, so we're a platform for for software developers. Um, you know, how, how does it work as a software developer working with IoT? How, how is it maybe different than working with other kinds of applications? What are, what are some of the things that you need to take into account? I think Felix might be um, best to answer that question. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, when developing a device, uh, the, what a developer needs to focus is in the constrained resources that the uh, chip and the hardware will be having. Um, some of the people in the development industry are already used to have a full of resources on the cloud for storage, for computing power, and even with that ability that the cloud provides of auto scaling the yeah. resources for adapting to the specific needs of your software. But when speaking about boards, very small boards, IoT boards, like yeah. this one or this one, these constraints of resources and how to optimally, optimally use the memory, the processing power, how to opt or, or choose one board or another that is specific for your IoT development, that's a key part and something that uh, usually, uh, well, not usually, but sometimes that for a people who are expert in developing uh, software and platforms get scared when working with hardware. I'll say that that's the main difference. And is it something that you that, that you see that software developers have a challenge with adapting to it? Is it is it like a different mindset that they have to have to adapt to? Yes, absolutely. Okay, because uh, having to program uh, more close to what hardware is with not such amount of level of abstractions that you have when uh, developing cloud platforms or web pages or mobile applications and so sometimes it's challenging. But the good thing yeah. is that um, for, 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 for a decade, maybe now, uh, thanks to um, open source hardware projects like the Arduino Foundation or the Raspberry Pi, all of them yeah. are providing with very cheap ports, tons of resources and a very lovely community to get on board on how to develop for the IoT. And actually, Rainier, even we, okay, at Pod, from our research and innovation department, we use okay those boards when implementing yeah. some specific stuff. We are today implementing some um, embedded software for our SIM cards, and the hardware that we use for testing our embedded software inside of the SIM cards is actually Arduino boards and some sensors that anyone can purchase out there and learn how to use, download your own firmware, develop, increase, implement. So. It's there. It's not yet a uh, the, with the with the help of the open source uh, hardware projects. And this knowledge it's out there as yeah. developers are used. Okay, with the open software as well and free software. Yeah. So what what I get from you, Felix, is uh, if if I were a software developer and I would be interested in working with IoT, just just get a cheap board, just start experimenting, right? And then exactly. getting 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 used to the to the limits also of a chip and how do you optimize them, right? Mm -hmm. Correct, and get close to those open source hardware communities. There's a lot of lovely people out there, ready ready to to help and to um, to solve your questions. So, and in this global community that is the internet, you are not alone yeah. anymore. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's interesting yeah. that that he mentions um, open source and all of this hardware that's available, which, in my opinion, is also a vulnerability. Right? Um, we've seen people hacking IoT connected devices for selfish means. So my question would be, um, as a developer who's interested in hardware programming, um, what considerations do I need to keep in mind while building for IoT? And have you had any glitches in the past where someone took over <laughs> your devices or your <laughs> No, well, actually, the security is, uh, should be a very important part uh, when speaking about implementing an IoT solution. But that's not something that it's only covering uh, the, the concern, needs to cover not only the device itself, but also the connectivity and your cloud platform in order to create a very secure solution. But with um, regarding your example, okay, how to make perhaps secure the device or trying um, to prevent to uh, a bad use if one of my devices I'm going to build, okay, 100 on devices, sell it, put it on the, on the market, on the field, how to prevent that a device is maybe hijacked and the connectivity is used for a different purpose, for example, okay? That's something that you can do uh, on when developing the firmware of the uh, hardware, but for example, from Pod, one of the solutions that we offer is what we call the IMEI Locker, which is a software inside of our SIM card that is uh, smart enough to recognize the IMEI, the identification of the device, so you can lock the SIM card to that device. And the SIM card itself, it realizes that it's set on a different device that can um, lead to a, um, to a not allowed consumption of data. The mm -hmm. SIM itself blocks for itself with no help of the remote platform and nothing. So inside of the SIM card, you can also have this kind of uh, of solutions, or you can implement from your device end as well. Is it, are those, uh, I saw on your website, you call this SIM apps, is that correct? Is it, yeah. Is it, yeah, okay, great, great. Uh, by the way, I just want to, to let all the attendees know that if you have any questions, you can ask them in the Q&A section and Viola and I will take a look at it to, uh, to throw them in the mix. Um, Another one that, that, that I think is, is also engineering related, but it's about, it's from you actually, David, because I, I watched a, a YouTube video of you of about two years ago. And, and, and in that you also talked about the fact that IoT applications or IoT networks need relatively more support than other kinds of applications. Can you maybe elaborate on that? Why, why support is so crucial when maintaining a, an IoT network? Uh, the, the support is, is crucial in, in, in basically keeping it uh, connected uh, at all times because uh, in these, uh, for instance, if we have a, a, our mobile phones, you know, it's, it's, it's annoying when they don't work, but it's not necessarily <laughs> crucial, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If, you, if you have machines, there could be medical devices, there could be, um, you know, you go from medical devices to, to, to even tracking, if you're tracking valuable goods, for example, sake, uh, from, from one side of the world to another, and uh, there's, there's a, a problem somewhere with, with the connectivity, uh, the, the device, there's, there's a whole number of things which need to be uh, assessed when uh, we get a call, um, as, as most uh, network providers do, where they'll say that the, um, uh, the, the SIM doesn't work for, for one reason or another. Now, it could be a number of things. Uh, so we look to, to support all of those those um, uh, aspects. It could be something from the device. It could be the um, things that are outside of our control. We could the network tower, could, you know, wherever they're they're uh, travelling yeah. through. We can steer the uh, network to to another network if if need be. If if say for instance one particular network in that area has gone down and and the device is locked to it. We can steer the the, uh, the connectivity to uh, an, another another network, um, and we can also test devices before they're even put in into uh, into the field. So we can make sure that that uh, it's an end-to-end -end solution which works from the connectivity through the, the, the device all the way through to our platform. Uh, to, if you've got large deployments of of, uh, of devices which are critical, uh, we we do advise to have 
these um, these things tested from end to end. Um, yeah. and we also supply a 24 seven uh, support service, uh, which we're able to, to look at any uh, implication that might happen. And a lot of these things can be resolved, you know, within uh, minutes or, or hours. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very valuable um, service to have support with, with IoT. Yeah. Great, thanks. Um, in the meantime, uh, yeah, I think we, we got a question that was also on my mind a little bit, and that is, uh, so uh, Felix, we talked a little bit, hey, starting out with IoT, just, just buy a chip and, and start to use it, right? Um, yeah, but uh, can we make it maybe a little bit more practical? What kind of software development languages do you guys use? What kind of frameworks do you use? What are, you know, if you want to begin with, what are the most easy to start with? I will say that a, a very good starting point would be with uh, Wi-Fi boards because they are mm -hmm. very cheap, very popular, and using Wi-Fi and connecting to Wi-Fi, um, trust me, it's more easier okay, than doing with a with, with GSM technology. So it's a very valid starting point. Uh, for example, this uh, expressive board um, can be programmed with MicroPython. So it's a, um, not the most abstract kind of language, uh, but uh, not the closest uh, also to the hardware. With MicroPython, you can avoid having to use the C language that sometimes uh, scares the people with less development skills. MicroPython looks very familiar and very uh, close to, um, to human language, okay, in some points, let's say. Um, with, the, with the help of, uh, of any um, integrate, uh, integrated development environment that you will use, you will be having MicroPython there. And all your um, developer I can do stuff like a, the coloring or the auto-completing. And there's a lot of tutorials for MicroPython and for Wi-Fi boards and would be okay, maybe definitely my suggestion for someone who want to start doing uh, some experimentation with the IoT, having known a lot of skills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic, thanks. MicroPython, I must admit, it's uh, something that, that I uh, didn't hear from before. So uh, thanks a lot for that one. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, Viola, I think you're muted. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes I, I was saying that are seeing as our community is really developers connecting with international clients. Um, I think for me as a developer on this uh, podcast, uh, on this webinar, I'd be curious as to, do you have any African developers that you work with as pod group, other than just your clientele best? Um, would you be looking to to hire, and 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 how would I join? Yeah. So still in the same in the same. How do I learn? But what opportunities are available? Well, we have. Uh... Uh, opportunities uh, come along as uh, as and when. I'm sure that Felix will will, will agree that um, you know it, uh, they're available from from everywhere and anywhere. So uh, if there are um, developers in in Africa who would like to apply for any uh, positions that we have available, and of course now that as with the majority of uh, the world working remotely, it uh, it, it can, can work from from anywhere. So uh, it's yeah, we would welcome. Uh, uh, any applications for for developers of, 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 of uh, any of our vacancies? I don't know if we've got any vacancies. That's awesome. Moment, but yeah, but, uh, yeah it would be open to uh, uh, African developers. Uh, so no, yeah, we would welcome them. Cool, Please. cool. Um, so now, I mean, you guys say you've been in the field for about twenty years. I don't, I don't, I don't think twenty years IoT was already comprehended as is. Um, what, what are some of the lessons you've learned? And um, if you could give us a prediction, so five, 10 years ahead, what's the industry looking like? I, I think uh, first off from 20 years ago, let's say we've learned a lot of acronyms over the decades. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I, I've, I've learned them all off my heart now and I won't, I won't reel them off, but uh, it, it wasn't called IoT back then. It, wasn't, it was called machine to machine. That was yes. the, the the very early. Oh yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. we uh, where it was it was it was quite unusual for a, a, a SIM card to be speaking to a server and not a human. That was that yeah. was the that was the the, the novelty of the early days of, of the technology. 
And then suddenly people started thinking, well, if we could get the SIM card to talk to the server, then it could talk to another SIM card somewhere else in the world. And you know, the, the, the pieces of the puzzle all sort of started to come together. And what we've learned over the years, I, I believe, is a greater understanding of not just the, 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 the market, but the technologies that, that have come and gone and, and how they've, they've uh, developed over, over the years, as, as Felix was, was, was talking about, it's now becoming a lot easier, I think, for people to, to, to get into it with development yeah. boards and, and cheap sensors and the, the open source um, platforms. Um, and I think that the future of IoT sort of jumping ahead uh, another decade or so um, is the, the, the advantages of being able to collect data from, from every conceivable manufacturing, monitoring, uh, medical, transport applications. Because you, if you think about it now um, with Facebook and with Google, they have now got you know, over a decade's worth of, of data from people's behavior which is they can then model uh, it with, with uh, artificial intelligence to be able to, to make predictions, et cetera. And they've been doing it for years for with the weather. But if you think every other part of the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the human behavior is, is, and uh, machines and uh, et cetera are not, uh, not monitored at all. So uh, I would think in, in about 10, 20 years time, you'll have every form of device um, and every uh, manufacturing machine We'll be able to talk to a central server to be able to collect the data if nothing else so then to be able to do predictive modeling i think that's what it will be used for that is a pie in the sky though you know we do realize that uh, <laughs> who knows what's going to ha happen in 10 years uh, especially at the world the rate is changing at the moment we don't know what's going to happen next week so uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. yeah valuable insights nonetheless huh? mm, yeah. All right. Hey, um, maybe uh, as, we're, as we're drawing a little bit towards the end of this uh, this session, uh, what we saw also on uh, on your website is that that you guys also have a, a couple of open source projects on uh, on GitHub. Uh, yeah, maybe you can give a short introduction on uh, on what that is all about, and uh, we will share the links then um, with our uh, community. Um, but yeah, that really, that looked really awesome. Thank you. Well, basically, on our GitHub, you can find some examples of uh, applications of our SIM apps, uh, free version of them, okay, for for downloading and for also learning how to encode applications for embedding on the SIM. So we have there a small version of that IMEI Locker uh, application that we have commercially. Ooh. It's out there and uh, the source code for, for people to learn how to develop these kind of applications for SIM cards. And also we are keeping a list of uh, a, a database that is uh, there on, uh, on GitHub of all the, what it's called the mobile country codes and mobile network codes, which is um, depending on your location and the um, connectivity providers, they are broadcasting those codes. And that's why your mobile phone knows that you're registered with uh, Vodafone Spain or with at and in the US, okay? Those uh, codes are there. And we have also a couple of applications for um, using that, uh, that database as well. Yeah, fantastic. That is, uh, I think, also really, really interesting for us to, uh, yeah, to, 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 sh to share. Um, and yeah, uh, I think we're really excited also about your commitment to the open source community uh, that, uh, that helps us out a lot. Um, yeah, I think we're coming a little bit to the close of this conversation. Um, Viola, do you have any last questions? No, I mean, no, I, I think unless we have any questions from the audience, it would be a good time to take them. Yeah, well, in that case, uh, David and Felix, I want to, uh, before any last questions may come in, I want to thank you very, very much for your time. Uh, really interesting discussion. I think uh, IoT is something that we will definitely see a lot more in Africa in, in the coming decade. And this is very, very interesting to our community. So thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Uh, I don't see any questions coming in right now. So we, we will collect them also afterwards. Uh, we'll try to answer them. And uh, yeah, once again, many, many thanks. 
Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Feel free to forward the, the questions on. We'll be happy to answer them you know, after the, uh, yeah, the recording. Absolutely. We will do that. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Also, thanks for all the attendees. As you uh, can expect, we will share this on, uh, on our community on Slack. We will also share it on YouTube. So thanks so much. And everybody, have a fantastic day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.